for this whole computer. Okay, guys, so today we're going to speak about the program we are, we use to teach at a Zoom. Yeah, so some things uh, you might know, but maybe something is going to be new for you. Okay, but before starting it, I would love to talk about uh, this combination, Zoom plus PowerPoint, because um, mainly uh, we can make our lessons more productive by using PowerPoint as well, right? Not just questions, yeah. Um, putting the visuals inside of PowerPoint and delivering the visual uh, class, yeah, as we discussed before on our using visuals lesson. Um, okay, so I am actually currently on PowerPoint, and you can see here that in PowerPoint we can find some uh, tools over here which we can work with. But before, don't forget to enable editing. Um, let me just show you. Wait. Um, if you share PowerPoint, how don't we see? Ah, uh, yeah, no. It was the black screen before. Oh, really? Okay. Now you can see it, right? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't black we, we screen. I mean, uh, I mean that uh, the tabs weren't seen. Oh, you okay. You just do it full screen. Yeah, just do it full screen and ta -da, magic. Um, okay, but before, before, uh, whenever you will open first time the lesson of the platform, yeah, I'm going to show you that as well. Uh, the lessons we have, let me just stop it. Yeah, this ones. Yeah, so here's some materials. But when you open it first time, you're going to see here above, uh, enable editing. So try to enable it first, because without that, you'll not be able to use these instruments on PowerPoint. Yeah. So uh, it can be good if, for example, your student uh, cannot see some part, yeah, and you can just zoom it. Uh, most of time, the problem which happens during my lessons, they cannot see the bottom side of the slide. So that's why I just zoom it and show them the bottom side. And now it comes in center. Okay, so what I really like here is this part. It can be a laser pointer, which you can show something. Yeah, they can see it quite well. I don't use it so much. The main thing I use is highlighter. So by highlighting, you can show them. You can show, for example, that is the two sentences for one student. And then you show the border for other student. Then you can just have fun with that. Yeah, show that. Yeah. And my tradition is when I finish the lesson, sorry, uh, when I finish the lesson, we have here every time, like at the end of every lesson, we have this guy. I think you know him. It is Heisenberg from uh, Breaking Bad. And I always draw some hair when I finish my uh, classes here. <laughs> so, yeah. So that is the thing. Then you can change it. For instance, if you want to show the student that it is right, you can use this one, this highlighter. And then by pointing red one, you can show that that's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Or sometimes, for example, when we have, let me, when we have some picture where it's really hard to see the, this highlighter, yeah. You can use some other color. You can use, for example, black, I guess. Yeah, like black is more visible. Yeah. Okay. And then another thing, when you finish, when you finish that all, uh, it will write you keep or discard. Well, if you press, if you click on keep, then all these drawings and highlighting stuff are going to stay. So that's why every time choose here, discard. Okay. 
Uh, but if you've made some mistake and you put keep, then don't save the PPT. Yeah, when you just um, yeah, when you just close it, just uh, write there that don't save the PPT. Okay, so we're going just to discard it. Um, yeah, that is the main instrumentarium which I use for this this part. I like it. So. And for instance, if you see that there are a lot of things here, you can just go again here and erase all ink and start from the beginning. Or for instance, if there is some part would you, that uh, you would like to erase, then you just take a razor over here. Um, you just erase it. Yeah. Uh, on visual classes, it's very good highlighter, just showing some details, yeah, which you want your student to describe, right? For instance, would you describe this guy or this girl, yeah. Okay, that is what, why I like uh, using PowerPoint for this, yeah. Because you have this kind of tools here. <clears throat> So later on, we're going to also see the annotation part of Zoom. Let's come back to our uh, presentation. All right. Let's start from the basics, yeah, which we have here. And whenever we open Zoom, we can see this. Uh, part and actually all you need you can find uh, exactly in this part of zoom yeah so just a moment I'll take highlighter yeah so you don't really need this part yeah because uh, that is uh, starting instant sharing you can make it every time when you when you start um, here you can as you know schedule your lessons yeah, let me see. Yeah, that is scheduling. Mm -hmm. Here you can schedule, but yeah, we'll start from scheduling. Let's see what we have here. Um, well, before I was scheduling my lessons, but then I just go here at meetings and there I just start my room five minutes before. Okay. So, but anyway, if you decide to schedule some, somehow your lessons, then here you have name uh, in very important parts here. Uh, whenever time you're going to set, it's not going to end, yeah? So don't, don't think that the lesson is going to automatically just close, yeah? It doesn't work like this. You can put here anytime you want, but it's good when you put the time of your class to know that you're going to have it. Here is very important, do not generate uh, ID automatically, yeah? Take your personal ID, so because on the platform you have your personal ID and whenever they uh, click on uh, enter the room, they will come exactly to this ID, which you have here. Then it's very important not to put password because anyway, whenever your students are coming and entering the room, uh, you are the one, you're the moderator. So you're the one who decides who comes and who, who uh, doesn't. Okay, uh, then here you can add it uh, also to your Google Calendar if you have it, or Outlook Calendar. Well, I don't have any calendars. I have my own calendar, which, I, which is not, it's neither um, Google nor uh, Outlook. That's all, yeah, and then you schedule and everyone is happy. Now let's go to the new meeting. Well, uh, this I've known recently. When you start new meeting, that's a bit different from going here, from going here and starting uh, your uh, personal ID. Because yesterday I had this problem. I started new meeting, but my students couldn't enter my room. So just that's why I went here and I opened my personal ID and that worked. Yeah, so that's why it can be risky to open new meeting from here. Maybe it also can be some back. Uh, you can also join this one. You can join some other meeting. Yeah, but for that, you have to know the personal ID of that meeting. So probably when you join uh, our trainings, you come here, I hope. 
Okay, so whenever we open some room, we have um, this window and we're going to start from participants. That is very important because uh, when you open, uh, then you have question, how am I going to see who is joining? Yeah. So that's why you're opening this window and you can control here. Uh, it's going to uh, get opened next to this. Yeah, not as a separate window next to that. With that, you're going to see who is coming, who is in a waiting room, yeah, whom to admit, uh, then, you can invite from here, you can mute or unmute someone. It's not the best idea to do it from here, yeah, when you have, for example, you explain something and there is some noise or echo uh, which disturbs your explanation, yeah. You can mute or un unmute someone or all of them. Now let's go to the screen share. Well, in screen share, you're going to see uh, different things you can share. Um, all right, so that is important that personally me, I never share my screen. Yeah, so that, that is not so nice idea to share your screen because then they're going to see everything you do, your desktop, all your documents and so on. So that's why get everything prepared, all your presentations you're going to present, yeah, all the things you're going to show, all the documents, make them open. And from here, they're going to be seen. Yeah, so you'll see that I have one presentation over here already open full screen. Um, when you open it full screen, it divides. Yeah, this one is the same presentation, but this one is full screen. So that's why I enter this one rather than this one. Then there's some folder over here and here we have whiteboard. So we'll come back to whiteboard. Here we have optimized screen, sc uh, sh uh, screen sharing for video clips. That is very good uh, when you share some video. If you have some visual lesson around some video, it's good to enable these two um, yeah, options. Well, usually I disable this one and enable share computer sound because most of time we have some audio files um, at our lessons, grammar lessons, and that's important to deliver that uh, uh, audio um, as good as we can. So again. Yeah. Then after we enter, we can see here some above menu. And the thing is that when you want to um, set your microphone or uh, video, you don't need to go to settings. Everything is here. You just need to open this one. And here we solve uh, one problem that if the student cannot hear your recording, so the first solution of this is to enable share uh, computer sound and then you don't need to uh, do these things. But if you do not do that for some reasons or you forgot to, uh, forget to that, uh, then um, that is the first microphone. For instance, I will demonstrate now. Uh, when you um, enable this one, the audio is not going to come. So that's why it should be this one or this one. So I'll demonstrate you that right now. Let's go to our PPT over here. Let's find some audio. Okay, now I have first microphone enabled. Now I'm going to play the audio. Well, I think you cannot hear it. You cannot hear it, right? So now I will now I will switch it to microphone two and see. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now it should work. Hi, I'm Ricardo, and I come from Mexico. Can you hear it now? Yes. Okay, very good. So that's why microphone two, if you have plugged, yeah, like 
mine. Uh, but then what I did, I decided to have some uh, separate microphone. So uh, that was sticked over here. Yeah, it was better option for them to hear me better. Um, and with this one, with this kind of microphone, it's better to use, give me a second. Oh, just a moment, guys. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, it's better to use uh, same as system or the best option, as I've told you before, is this one, share computer sound. With sharing computer sound, you don't need to set anything here. Yeah, it's going to be computer so sound only. But if you forgot about it and you don't want to stop your sharing, reshare it again, so just go to the second microphone or same as system. So these two things are going to work and you're going to get rid of this problem very fast. Let me show you that. So this two, this one and this one, they're good for that. Then if the student cannot see you, well, this problem is also solved. You don't need to go to settings again to stop your sharing, go to settings, see there and go back. Uh, you have all settings here. You can uh, change uh, that over here. All the cameras. So here I have a lot of cameras and most of them, they're actually just simulators. Yeah. But that's another technical thing, yeah. Um, yeah, so here we solve two problems. First, when the student cannot hear the recording and the second, when the student cannot see. All right, let's move on. Okay, why do we have this over here? Yeah, um, the second way how we can see who is joining, because after sharing, you're not going to see the participants next to, next to this, I guess, just a moment which I've showed you already, yeah. So when you open it, the participants, uh, you can see the window next to this one, yeah. But whenever you start sharing something, it disappears. And to bring it back, you go here, participants. And you will see the separate window now and you can see who is joining because after sharing you cannot see who is joining you you have to open this and see everyone who is joining who is a waiting room yeah okay let's continue all right and when everyone when you yeah mainly uh, are going to open your camera and sound um in sharing mode you're going to have these windows, which is uh, which are going to, to show your participants' um, videos, or sometimes you're you're not going to see their videos. So the main way how I use it when I see that I explain something and it, it creates some technical echo, or um, the student has some I don't know noise around him, so I just mute them by this. Yeah, I just click on it and then I mute them. Okay, so here you have some more option for, let's say, controlling that um, student connection. This, you can stop the video, but I don't, I think that is meaningless to stop someone's video. Um, when the student doesn't open their video, Instead of stop video, you have something like require student to open their video. Yeah, so instead of just uh, telling that, that could you please open your uh, video? Yeah, could you please start your video? You can just go here to the settings and ask the person. And on the student screen is going to just to be like, there's some request to open your camera. Okay, what is that chat? Well, um, in chat, we have some feature. We can uh, send some overall message to all of them, or we can uh, send it personally. If you have something that you don't want uh, to tell everyone, but to, to a particular student, then use this feature. Just go here and chat with that person. 
or you can open chat and in a settings you will see there before sending everyone you just open it and you choose exact the person you want to send this message to all right let's continue so some other uh, some more options you can use here that is chat as i've told you so it's going to be separate window where you can write the words yeah where you can write some personal messages then recording while sharing you can also start recording on your computer or to the cloud if you have uh, one uh, but also before before you start the sharing you can actually press record yeah so if you want to record or your lesson you can just start it before all these things yeah as i do now for example um this one is the best thing that uh, you just take all the control from participants disable participants annotations um uh, for now let me see if yeah now you can you're able to annotate here something you're able to write on my ppt something yeah but when i disable it you cannot do anything right so that's why it's better when you start your meeting the first thing you just disable participants to annotate well here the another thing you can do sometimes when you teach this above panel yeah this menu it can be quite destructive you it's hard to see the for example here you see i cannot it's hard to see this part what's going on here so that's why you can go here and you can hide floating meeting controls you just hide it and if you want to come back to the menu you just press um what is that that escape i guess yeah that is escape mm -hmm. you just press that and it comes back okay what we have else that's me <laughs> yeah so as i've told you before before sharing you can come here to the record and record on this computer or cloud if you have cloud that's good but it can be technically risky so that's why the best uh, option here is to record on uh, on your computer well okay uh, while sharing you can pause your sharing yeah for instance let me share our lesson yeah so here we have some text okay yeah and you want to see what's uh, what's coming up what's what's the next so you just pause and you go you see it now i can see the next slide yeah but you do, you cannot see it so i analyze if i have time when i when i do that when i don't have time yeah and i know that I, I i have to explain some grammar i just pause the um yeah uh, pause my sharing and then go in front and i see what i have here which things i can um let's say skip and explain something more important and then i come back to sharing so this, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. So what if I go to completely a new screen? For example, I, I'm showing them the PowerPoint, but I want to Google something during that. So will they see it or? Uh, no, if you are sharing the PPT, they're not going to see Google because it's another program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it's very so important. They'll... Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're no, I... seeing the PowerPoint, yes? They're going to see PowerPoint only because you've shared that, yeah? Uh, but I always share just PowerPoint or not all my screen, but when I uh, just um, 
go to another screen, I guess they see uh, the my other files or something, no? Um, you guess? Like, are you sure or you just guess about it? Uh, I guess that you they see because, um, for example, I didn't know about resuming, um, and yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, when you share just one thing, yeah, when you share just one window, they're going to see only this window. Yeah. So very important when you start sharing, just pay attention that it's not going to be your screen because maybe. That is what you do. For instance, I share my screen, yeah, and whenever I go somewhere else, you can see it. You can clearly see, it. right? Whenever I go out, yeah. Whenever. I... So now I'm sharing my screen. You see. So. So that's why now I'm going to zoom PPT. Can you see my um, desktop? Yeah, we saw your desktop. Uh, no, this you you saw because I was uh, sharing my screen, but now mm -hmm. I'm sharing no. this PPT only. Yeah. So let's experiment. Now I'm going on desktop. Can you see it? No. no. Yeah. No. The the sharing the sharing pause. So whenever you go, for instance, um, browser. Yeah. Now I'm opening browser. Yeah, and the PPT. Is stopped, yeah, or paused. Let's say, yeah. Uh, th that's good to know. I I didn't know it. Yeah. So now I come back again to sharing. What is that? Yeah. Now. Yeah, it's sharing again. So it's coming back. Yeah. So and guys, uh, before I was uh, stopping one. Uh, my one sharing and starting the next one but you don't need to do that you can make a new sharing without stopping it yeah so before i was uh, going just a moment before i was yes stopping then sharing again and sharing something else but uh, you don't need to do that because come on you know yeah just a moment I will hide. Mm -hmm. So you can just start new sharing. And with new sharing, you're again going here. So here we have ba basics. What is that? Just a moment, guys. I'm going to take highlighter. Here you have basics. And in basics, uh, we know that there we have. We can choose exact window we want to share or all our screen when it's necessary yeah so we can share whiteboard that is special platform yeah on zoom where you can explain something or play some games but but in advanced you can see here i uh, share some portion of screen yeah so i've never done it so that's why we can try it now i'm going to share some portion so after sharing you're going to choose which part exactly you want to share and you can now see that i think can you see the part i'm sharing can you see the yeah. portion yeah. yeah so you can make it more yeah less that can be very fun if you are if you could find some game uh, with some visuals yeah which has two parts yeah two scenes happening and you can show first first portion yeah first part of the uh, photo or picture and then you tell like could you guess what's going on like in the second part and that is the only way like uh, that comes to my mind we can use portion um, then if the problem with sound is cannot be solved anyway yeah that is possible technically possible um then you can uh, share music or computer sound only yeah or if you have some conversations which uh, is built on music right or song right so then you can share uh, music of the computer only so they, they can just hear 
Okay, so then count it from second camera. Well, if you have two cameras, it's very good. Then you can uh, share one camera and then they, they would see you from different uh, sides. Yeah. So that can be good if you have whiteboard. Yeah, if you don't want to use Zoom whiteboard. If you have whiteboard and you have two cameras, so one camera can, uh, can point you and the another one can um, show your um, whiteboard which is really cool. Then, and in files we have, we can share not only the files we have on our laptop, but also in Google, on Google Drive or Box. Well, this two I know, but Box, I have no idea what is that. So mainly I use Google Drive. All right, so, yep. Now let's have some fun. We're coming to the very um, cool feature of Zoom that is uh, annotations, yeah, and mainly on the uh, menu of sharing, you can find it over here, annotate. You can even find it on your, can you find annotate on your menu, guys? Yes. Okay, now I'll allow you to annotate. Can you try to annotate on this, on my presentation? I don't have it. I also can't see that. You, oh, yeah. look, someone is drawing. I don't know who is that. Let me see it. Now I will switch. It's Go. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm also coming to annotation and I can take annotation of Shams and move it. Yeah, make it bigger yeah so it's very good for example when you have some let me share it again when you have uh, some exercise with your students yeah but it can be also time consuming yeah i'll tell you just now this one for instance yeah and you can just say so guys you can connect your annotations and we can start doing that yeah and this this one yeah, but I don't do that with students, yeah? I don't allow them to annotate because it can really take time for them to annotate. Then, moreover, I can give you um, permission to use my mouse. Let me make another share. Yeah, now I'm going to Zoom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and here, remote control, I think you also have it. You might have it approved. Leila is requesting remote control. Okay, so Leila is requesting now a remote control of your screen. Let's see what will happen. Yes, Leila, now it's on you, I guess. Yeah, so that, that is about whiteboard. So you can do the same things with whiteboard. So let me now reshare it. Let's stop, but let's go to our Zoom. Okay. Oops, just a moment, guys. Yeah, that is about annotation, guys. So we just go to annotation. It can be open on your slide, minus of annotation. Everything you're going to draw, write, whatever, is going to stay on your slide because we don't annotate on slide. We annotate on uh, sharing screen. Um, yeah, so, and there's an instrumentarium you can use, tools you can use. Yeah, and whiteboard. Okay, possible technical issues. Just give me some time, I will plug my
All right, I'm back. <laughs> well, that's so critical to oh, to have some training out of your home. Okay, so yeah, so possible technical issues we can see here. Uh, sometimes chat window can disappear uh, while sharing. So what we do, we stop the sharing and we start it again. That's the only way to fix it. Or uh, you can go and open annotation. Whenever you're going to open an annotation, the window of chat uh, of chat can appear as well. But then you have to close annotation. So that's a bit long process. Yeah, before I was doing like this, but then I found out that I can just stop sharing and chat can come back. So whenever we have some echo while speaking or playing audio, then you can just unmute all your participants because the problem of echo comes most of time from the, let's say, plusing technical uh, sounds of uh, part, uh, participants. Well, uh, whenever students can't hear you, I think you know that. So you can go to audio, you can fix it from here or if it's not fixable then you can go to new sharing and in new sharing you can uh, share computer sound as well if it doesn't work then you can go to new sharing advanced and uh, share music or computer sound only these are three ways you can solve this problem if students cannot see you you can go to the uh, menu bar above and you can set your video then be careful with sharing. Yeah, whenever you share something, read twice what you're sharing, okay? So sometimes you can read all, uh, you can share all your screen and it can bring to something you wouldn't like to have. Um, annotation remain on presentation. Well, there is nothing you can solve it. The only thing you can just go on annotation again, clear everything and then close the annotation and continue. Whenever you cannot see who is joining, uh, go to the bar menu, uh, menu bar and uh, open the participants window and there you're going to see everyone who is joining, who is in the waiting room. You can mute and mute every, everyone. There is one thing about muting and uh, unmuting people. If, for example, here, I see Lela and she unmuted herself. If I'm going, uh, she muted herself. So if I'm going to unmute her, it's not going to work. Yeah, I can just send her some request, I guess. Just a moment, unmute. If I can do that. I closed, hello record, remove. Nope, but I can put her to wait in the waiting room. I don't know <laughs> when it can work, yeah. Okay, so when you see that, for example, your lesson is not ready still, yeah, you can just put someone to wait. Okay, that's technical problems. Now I would love to ask you, is there any other technical problems you've encountered with, you've faced with? Nope. Okay, then let's continue. Uh, and of course, uh, when you, it is something you cannot solve technically uh, through the tools of Zoom, then don't hesitate telling your students about technical problem at first, yeah. If it is something from their side and solving it before or after the lesson. Well, I've had, for example, a student, uh, he had a, echo when he was speaking or I was speaking I was feeling that it was something from his side and I just said after the lesson let's just spend five uh, minutes of testing and let's try to solve it and we've solved that somehow okay uh, if they need to change some piece of uh, technology tell them that you have some problems with earphones please change them for the next lesson Then, and yeah, the things I've told you, uh, that is something that, I, that I've taken from my experience uh, using Zoom and experimenting with that. But you, you, uh, you could ask how 
to experiment with Zoom when we don't have any students? Well, uh, you can create the second Zoom account and join own room and start experimenting, start uh, practicing the skills you will need. Yeah. So then you can search also on the internet uh, about more hidden features of Zoom. That is all I could find yeah, by my own. Uh, but on the internet, you can also find some communities of Zoom and they can tell you some easier um, ways yeah, of uh, using Zoom as well. Um, never forget uh, to take feedbacks from your students about technical issues. Yeah, not just about the lesson, how was the lesson, but how was the technical issues? Is there anything with echo or can you hear me well? Yeah, should I change something? Um, yeah, and if there's something you cannot do, yeah, if there's something you cannot solve through technical features of um, Zoom, then report uh, the problem to your manager. Because as you know, we have technical team, yeah, and they are mainly providing us the accounts of it. All right, any questions? Any questions, guys? Mm, no, no, no questions. I guess that we discovered all hidden ah. features of. Sorry. That's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess that we learned many things today that I haven't know about resuming calls uh, and uh, the sharing screen. And I don't think that there is uh, more uh, hidden features of Zoom. Mm hmm. That, that can be in the future because Zoom is actually developing really fast. Um, I don't know, they, I've opened, I, yeah, I've opened the account on Zoom maybe three or four months ago, I don't know for sure. And they've had almost like two updates uh, per month, yeah. So they're changing over time, something, yeah. So, and by just following the news and also tips and tricks about Zoom, you can find for the future that, oh, they've changed this thing. Now I can do like this. Wow. So, I mean, it's again comes to the global philosophy, which we always have. Never stop learning about anything, about your teaching skills, about, I don't know, teaching styles, blah, blah, blah. And also about Zoom, yeah, the program you use. Mm, okay. Thank you, Shams, uh, however, for your compliment. Uh, yeah, any other questions, any other problems maybe you faced uh, uh, working with Zoom? No, okay, now I would ask you to write on our chat your name and surname or any way how I could find you on Facebook, okay? Because next lesson, we're going to have our last session is going to be ready to go. It's not going to be a lot about learning. It's going to be just, okay, I can see Shams already. It's going to be just, yeah, you'll see it. I prepared all those surprises for you. Yeah. All right. We have Leila. So that is the way I can find you for sure on Facebook, right? Okay. I'm waiting for others. And from my side, I'm going to send you uh, the PDF of the presentation uh, you've seen right now. Yeah, so you can always have it as a guide document for you to see something there. To look up for that. Okay, I just need to find what is that? Uh huh, okay webinar and then we have zoom yeah that's for you guys you can download it oh thank you yeah if you if you could even uh 
send me, yeah, for example, Leila, she sent me the link of that. Okay, thank you. File sensitive. Yeah, so you can uh, closer look at Zoom. You can download it, now it's yours. Uh, thank you so much for the training, guys. Do you have any questions? If not, then let's analyze it. And I'll see you on Monday. On Monday, probably it's going to be our last session. Ready to go. Uh, prepare your letters. We're going to read them and cry. Um, okay. So have a nice day, guys. See you. Thank have you. a nice day too. Bye. 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 <laughs>